Howdy guys and welcome back to Warlord Wednesday and today we're working on the tile. Now I wanted to do some easter egg stuff that we can put on the board. Little nuggets of narrative that make people go ooh and wow when they're looking at it. But unfortunately uh, my camera decided to shut down halfway through the filming of it uh, which caused me no end of issues and I've managed to reset it to get it back up and working. I don't know, there was something wrong with the card. Blah, blah, blah. But I managed, it means basically I had to reformat the memory card and uh, and it and it happened. We've lost some stuff. So instead we're gonna move on to doing snow effects, which I think a lot of you will be a lot more happier with. Now we're gonna be darting between two different types of boards or tiles here because while one's doing one thing, I've gotta then move on to the next thing uh, and we'll do it like that. But what have we got so far? Well, I've been adding little bits of narrative to it like, just here there's a crate uh, with uh, a, a crate on the top of it with some uh, food and stuff like that in it but once we put the snow on there that's going to disappear but it just it just looks really cool and the same down here I've added some bits down here as well now there's also some guns rifles uh, left laying around uh, which is one here uh, one over here and then there's a few just on the battlefield sort of thing which is kind of cool now we're going to be looking into how to make um, bodies as well uh, that we can put down and uh, hide in the snow and stuff like that uh, because I just think it'll add to the the whole theme and atmosphere of this but we're also going to be putting things like barbed wire fences on here as well because I just think it would look really cool if we had some at least a, a section of barbed wire um, and we could also play around with making some green stuff um, uh, sandbags as well which I've done in the past so we can do that as well and just place some some sandbags in there as well okay so let's start off with the first things first let's start off with uh, creating our muddy uh, effect that we need to put into there okay so I'm gonna see you guys in a few seconds howdy guys and welcome back okay so what are we gonna do well we're gonna start off with putting in some dark mud uh, and this is by uh, Mig ammo and it's a really lovely lovely uh, uh, weathering liquid I don't tend to use many weathering powders these days uh, when it comes to um, creating uh, weathering effects I tend to go for the liquids now because they're just so much uh, easier to use and they're all it's basically they're all prepared for you which is always good always good okay so what I'm doing is this is all of this that I'm applying while it's still wet, okay? So I want to be able to add bits and pieces into this while it's still wet. And if you notice, I'm painting in areas as well. So I'm kind of painting it in. Now, there's nothing stopping you from doing this with um, just watered down uh, powders adding the powders and doing it yourself or even you could paint this in um, using obviously paint um, but it's totally up to you how you you do it now I kind of like just to paint this stuff in now it gets it quite it makes it quite expensive but because it's only on a small area that we're doing it um, it doesn't get too bad and I tend to stock up on a lot, like three or four bottles of each colour. Uh, so I've always got some laying around. Um, not to say that everybody else can afford to do that, because obviously we can't. But I, when I've got a bit of cash, I just stock. Uh, and when I haven't got a bit of cash, it just helps to have it laying around then, doesn't it? Okay, so let's just do that there. Okay, so that's our area that we're working with. Now I'm going to go in over the top and I'm going to be adding in Earth Natural by, again, MIG Ammo. Uh, it is, again, a gorgeous, gorgeous um, colour. I've got to say it really is. And I'm just going in the centre areas now with this. Like so. Okay, because this is basically going to be our basis for our water effects from Lego in as well because we're going to be using GW water effects now the nice thing about the GW stuff is it cracks and it creates lovely 
um, sort of like cracked ice. You know, like you see that on the roads and stuff where there's puddles and you get that cracked ice look. That's what we're trying to recreate uh, using the GW stuff. Okay, so I'm not too sure whether you can see it. It might be a case of that I just have to adjust the lamps a little bit. But we're starting to get like two different colours uh, mixing in there. Now we're going to go in with our AK Interactive and that is Damped Earth. Damp Earth, I should say, not Damped. It's Damp Earth. Okay, now the reason why I do this is I kind of like the idea of like the sewage in in it as well and it kind of gives it a really sort of like lovely effect now you can even add oil into this as well um, which just if you can start to see that it's starting to bleed and that's what I want it to do I want it to bleed sort of thing outwards because when you've got a lot of uh, muddy dirty water and sewage mixing together especially from like say if there's a dead animal nearby or animals use it you tend to get like the word is poop um, mixing in with the mud and that's what I'm trying to create because it gives it a really really lovely lovely look um, I always say this is that if you get a chance just go out when you're out with folks and stuff like that or just out with friends into the countryside and stuff just take a few photographs of uh, areas where there's well trodden uh, with animals and stuff like that like farm animals because you'll see like some amazing muddy patterns and stuff appearing that you can take photographs of that you can use in your models okay so we're starting to get a lovely effect there okay so the boring process is that has to dry okay now that takes quite a long time to dry you can speed it up by just using a hair dryer over the top but once it's dry it will dry now this will match up with the other tile that I'm doing um, which logs onto this one which has the whole sort of like snaky piled of earth and stuff like that on that side so what I'm doing is is if you notice that it's I haven't really sort of painted loads and loads of color into this uh, because a lot of this is going to be sort of piled up with snow so I just want a certain amount showing but um, I need to be able to uh, have a sort of mute colour here so it just represents earth basically because the white will really take that away um, when we place the white on there and plus we're going to have to dirty up areas of the white snow as well and that's the most important thing because when you've got vehicles going up and down all the time uh, you're going to get a lot of slush created and you're going to get that look of uh, dirty snow piled up now it's a great way of doing that which we're, we're going to show you once we get all the snow on the board. Okay, so <clears throat> we need to let this dry for a bit. So while this is drying, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and I'll see you guys in a second. Howdy guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. While we're waiting for the board to dry it now, I thought we'd jump on and just do some sandbags. Now, I like to keep my green stuff when I'm about to use it in warm water. It can be lukewarm water, but as long as it's warm, uh, not, not hot enough for you to to hurt yourself of course but just warm now you're going to ask yourself why am i throwing lots of water on here well green stuff it is when it's at its best is when it's wet okay now a lot of people just assume that oh it's a putty you can just twist it bend it mix it together boom there's your green stuff you'll get much more out of it okay much more detail much more uh elasticity whatever you want to call it uh, when it's uh, warm okay or when it's on water as well um, that way it doesn't stick to here okay it literally uh, you keep you keep it nice and moist <laughs> it's a magical <laughs> word okay so <laughs> let's get on with this quickly let's move on to something else so what am I doing <laughs> well today I'm gonna make sad bags Okay, we're gonna make sandbags. Come on, man, hold it together. Okay, we're gonna make sandbags, okay? Right, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna roll this together, sorry. Oh dear, talk about cracking up on camera. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sandbags. Okay, so let's just roll this out. Now, because, okay, there's water, it stops it from sticking and, 
what we need to do is just oh, I'm looking at the camera I do apologize is just roll this out look there's hundreds of different ways you could do sandbags if you want to get really detailed okay you can make a little mold and pour them into it but this is just one way how I do mine and then I tend to tend to dress them so to speak once once they're done now the only difference with rolling it out like this is because uh, the only trouble you'll have is is that sometimes you'll get some bits thicker than others don't worry so I will start off by cutting the end off and in fact it helps to wet your tools as well okay so we're dealing with about that size okay uh, and again like that what we're doing is every time we're doing this just wet your tool okay <laughs> oh my god what's going on today okay just keep going like that okay it doesn't matter if there's a few different sizes there's bound to be um, but just make sure there's plenty of water because the last thing you want to do is it to stick okay like so that one's a little bit big but it won't make any difference okay and keep it going it was a bit short keep it going and then just taper off the end okay right so here's this is what we've got okay so let's just put that in water for a second let's bring that back out okay so what we do to do is we're just gonna make sure that we can just go boom helps if you've got a really strong sharp blade which I really need to change the blade on this one, as you can see, it can't even cut green stuff. Now I've done loads of tutorials with green stuff, but for those of you that can't find them on my channel, uh, and yes, somebody asked me if I could sort out the playlist for Bolt Action or Warlord Wednesday, yes I will do. Uh, it's just I've got to find a bit of time, because when I'm not making videos, which is a 24-7 thing, obviously I have other things to get done. Okay. But I will do that for you, dude, don't worry. Okay, so there's our sandbags. Nice and simple. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place these onto the board uh, when we start dressing them in. So in the meantime, I'm just going to keep them in the water so they're out of the way and just take away any bits that we don't need. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys, and welcome back. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to place our sandbags. Okay, so I'm just going to take them out. Now, sandbags in themselves are generally, uh, because these are quite wet as well, we're going to be okay. So I'm just flattening out, as you can see, like areas. So we just need to flatten them out here and there because we need them to sit, okay, nicely. And we need them to rest where we need them to rest. So I'm just going to flatten out the corners. So what I'm doing is I'm flattening out the corners like so, and then just in the middle. It doesn't matter if you get your fingerprints all open for the meantime. I do apologize for that. That was me knocking the camera. We're just going to place them in like so. Okay, so we're going to continue doing that. And again, we're going to lay them like that over the top we can just mold them into where we want because I've got to say I do like making my own sandbags there's something very therapeutic about making sandbags uh, you can buy molds I've not seen them personally but you can buy molds that do it all for you or you can make them yourself now I tend to like making them myself because there is a sense of achievement and uh, relaxation you get out of placing sandbags and they don't always have to be perfect as well because don't forget we're going to be covering them in snow but it just adds to detail and if we can create stuff that we can add to the board that makes it look a little bit better then that's what it's for isn't it uh, so these are basically static what we're building here is a static board a board that basically 
isn't modular where you can take stuff away and add stuff to it. I mean, the only modular side of it is that it's on a tile. Each one's built into, everything's built onto a tile. That's about as modular as it gets. Um, but with uh, the modular stuff, it means you can have a, a board that you can just constantly um, update and change around, which most people fancy, most people enjoy. I like static boards, uh, I like all sorts basically, it all depends. Okay, so once we've started piling them on, start layering them now, okay? And uh, you can lay these down in different angles and stuff, they don't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, regimental because sandbags tend to slip Sandbags in themselves are heavy, so when people throw them on top of each other, they don't always sit how they're supposed to sit. Um, and when they get wet, they also can, if someone lands against them, they can roll forward as well. So don't be afraid to do that. You know, you have some tip down, it's always, it always looks quite good if some have been knocked over. So we could, if we wanted, we could put one just there sort of thing. And then maybe just, so it looks like it's been knocked down. And let's just place another one on the top, just there. Okay, so we've got two more to do, and then we can do the nice bits, which I kind of enjoy. Uh -huh. And then another one just in there. Okay, so. Let's get a little bit nearer and let's see how we can make the sandbags, uh, sandbags a little bit more detailed. I'll see you in a second. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so hopefully this will give you uh, a better view of what we're doing. Okay, so I've made my knife a little bit wet because the last thing I want it to do is, is stick. So what I'm just doing is I'm going in and so as you can see I'm just adding detail to the sandbags like little seam lines, little stitching areas, like so. And you can go back in again and go the other way. And you can even do things like this, which I kind of like doing. You've got to be careful, hopefully it's stuck down, is add some bullet holes, okay, where it's hit. And then that will allow us to add sand in there and dirt and stuff like that. And we can go in again like so, add your little seam line, just add that in, and again go in, add your, your stitching. I mean, this is how I do mine. Because you're not really getting a, uh, these aren't really gonna be sort of like a close up thing. These are more sort of like just decorative little Easter eggs that we're placing in just to add to our scenery. You know, we can get away with quite a bit. So if we wanna add like another bullet hole there, we can do, same there and Obviously the same in there. We can just open that up like so. Okay, so I'm gonna finish these off and I'll see you guys in a second. Hello right, guys, and welcome back. Okay, so we've got a nice arrangement of sandbags just there. Now you could carry that on along there. You could uh, build up uh, a bigger defense and stuff on that side. You could even, if you wanted, um, sort of building wooden structures into it as well to add some sort of sense that you know, they've turned this into a living area, so to speak. But it depends on what you want to add to it. Now, what I don't want to go is too mad on it because obviously for this board is going to be a beautiful winter board and I want to focus more on 
the little surprises that you're going to find within the board sort of thing uh, and play around with like different textures like so there we've got a we've got a, a rifle just there that we can then uh, cover over with snow and stuff like that and just maybe clean it away just so part of it's revealing um, and the same with the cow obviously we're going to want to add in you know our frozen blood and stuff like that around it um, and uh, even on the other one we've got a horse as well um, that we can bury into the sand, into the snow um, and just little bits and pieces just to dress it up okay so while this is still drying and this is still drying we're now going to add in some barbed wire I think along the top there just to dress it and I'll see you guys in a second Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so while the other stuff's drying, I'm gonna be looking at the barbed wire stuff. Now, um, you often see on battlefields, barbed wire's a great uh, deterrent for slowing people down um, because if they have to cut their way through it, then it slows an entire force down. And barbed wire has been around for a very, very long time. Now, if you know what the original use of barbed wire was, leave it in the comments uh, because it'd be interesting to find out. Uh, I know, but do you know? Okay, so let's look at, it's been one of those days today, I'm just in a really giggly mood. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Now, there's many ways you can do this. You can paint it on a stick. I tend to wrap my barbed wire around a stick to get the shape that I want, and then I start painting it. Uh, you can even dip it, uh, put it into a, uh, a wash and leave it in there for a bit, give it a good shake, and it kind of clings to it. As you can see uh, on here, we've got, uh, my special painting stick that's a nice bit of balsa wood which I wrap my barbed wire around. Now while that's setting I'm going to be using um, MIG enamel wash which is a light rust to add to it as well. Now give that a good shake and what we're going to do is we're just going to dip our brush in like so and we're just going to coat it. Okay so areas uh, that we feel that we can put it on let's just paint it on there now you're going to have to let this settle um, before you actually go ahead and let's just bring that down there so you can actually see what's going on um, before you put it onto the battlefield but um, it does give it a really nice sort of look as well I mean I tend to like try and create as much color in it as possible some people just paint it straight away like a brown uh, I like to I like to see the metal in it um, but I also like to to coat it in rust and stuff like that uh, and you can even if you're clever enough you can even put like a bit of rags hanging off it which would look so cool uh, now there's loads of different types of uh, uh, barbed wire you can buy from different outlets but you know uh, it depends on your your flavor now I've got some other stuff which is quite sharp which uh, really does look like barbed wire but this stuff when it's all put up and painted up looks absolutely amazing okay so we need to let that settle for a bit we're going to come back to that in a second and we're going to put it up on the battlefield or on our tile and see what it looks like so I'll see you guys in a second howdy guys and welcome back okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add in our water effects now you've got to be very very careful with this because what you don't want it to do is just pour out suddenly so doing it from a, a bottle or a syringe uh, makes so much more sense okay so we're basically you can't really see it too well at the moment we're just basically letting it find its own feet we're letting it spread out into our mix uh, and I'm going to do the same on this side just pouring it out let it find its own spacing like so because what we want it to do is we want it to fill in our, our dips so to speak to create some a beautiful uh, watery effects or puddles basically that's the way you've got to look at it I don't know what's wrong with me today I'm absolutely spouting pap but I'm actually enjoying myself I think this is what the hobby does to you if you don't enjoy what you're doing then and you can't have fun with it then there's no point doing it uh, it can be difficult and you can burn yourself out but the nice thing about it is when it all comes together things work really really well what I'm going to do now is now it's starting to settle I'm just gonna tease it forward a bit and just uh, space it out brushing it and feathering it in uh, to where I need it to go um, and this will allow 
us to create some really nice sort of murky water effects. Just that's it, just fan it out a bit more around here as well. I've got to say this is some of my favourite bits. This is this sort of stuff when you're doing this is just so much more fun. Creating all these like effects into your boards. Now I'm hoping with tradition this stuff tended to crack uh, when it dried and what I tend to find is that it it pulls the sides in sort of thing so because we've built up the way to explain it is, is like this our water liquid goes in like this now as it dries okay as it dries it tends to to pull out and cling to the sides and stuff which makes it crack so we're creating a kind of cracked ice effect if you get what I'm trying to say uh, now if you look at uh, puddles uh, when it's snowed and it's iced over you tend to get this sort of like cracked ice uh, where people have either gone over it or vehicles have gone over it and that's what I'm trying to do here I'm trying to get it to to settle in grab the sides so to speak and and pull once it's dry now this is going to take quite a while to dry because it always does it's not a quick process but once it's dried hopefully we're going to see these cracks in it and if it doesn't then we've got some fantastic ice uh, in our uh, holes and stuff like that and that's what we we're also trying to look now i'm going to finish off the rest of the board using this stuff and i'll see you guys in a second howdy guys and welcome back okay so as i expected we've got that beautiful cracking sensation all the way down now this is what i've wanted so we want to be able to create that cracked ice look uh, and it goes all the way down but it's nice thing about it it's only happened in patterns here and there and that's what we want so when we add our white snow to this this is going to look absolutely amazing when we blend it all in now i've also gone ahead and i've painted up our sandbags as well and because of the fingerprints that are on there it's given us a really nice texture now you can use uh, bandage cloths to press down on it you can use fabric to press down it but you know for this scale it doesn't really matter uh, you're not really going to sort of pay much detail to it it just becomes another piece of the scenery but it's a piece of scenery that looks really really nice now once we've got all the snow added in we can go in and add uh, some dirt and sand that have maybe fall, fallen out of the uh, the bags where they've been hit um, and our barbed wire has come out and dried really nicely we've got that lovely rusty look uh, and bits of it are shiny as well again when we come into dirtying all this down when we add in our dirty snow we can play around with that a little bit further so I really hope this has been quite interesting for you uh, and the next thing we're going to be able to do next week is add our snow now that's going to be the exciting part okay guys you be good you be safe and I'm going to see you very very soon